Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. In this video, we're gonna discuss different styles of argumentation when it is created in the inductive way. In the first style, which is called cause and effect argument, uh, we have uh, two observations. We can call the first observation X and we can call the second observation Y. Okay, And the conclusion is in the term of X causes Y. For example, if we have two banks, bank A and bank B, and if we observe that in, bank, in the case of bank A, the performance indicators are decreasing right now. And in bank B, for bank B, the clients from bank A are moving to bank B. This is the second observation. And one person concluded that X is the cause of Y. It means the performance indicators or the decrease in, in, in performance indicators of bank A uh, is the reason uh, for the movement or the transfer of clients from bank A to bank B. Okay. So the structure here of the argument is X happens, Y happens, and the conclusion is X causes Y. What was not stated here is the assumptions. And as we can define assumptions as the unstated uh, premises, the premises or the facts that uh, the facts that weren't said by the argument author, and without which uh, the argument the author of the argument uh, wouldn't be able to reach the conclusion. In our example, we can see that the author of the argument can couldn't reach the conclusion that x caused y unless he assumed that x is the only cause of y that's the first assumption and the second assumption is y doesn't cause x because if he did so if he didn't so so he wouldn't be able to reach the conclusion okay Another assumption is that uh, both observations, X and Y, are not coincidental because he assumed that one is the cause of the other. So for him or for this, or for this uh, argument uh, author, the, uh, the assumption uh, that X and Y are not coincidental is mandatory and necessary to reach the conclusion that X caused Y. In the second type of argumentation created by inductive way is uh, called statistical argumentation or statistical arguments in which we have X and Y a little bit different from X and Y in uh, the cause and effect arguments. Here, in a statistical argumentation, uh, we can consider that uh, X is a sample from a population uh, Y. So we have the population uh, Y and we have a sample X from the population. And the conclusion in this argument states that uh, what is true about the sample is true about the population. Okay. So in this case, the assumption that the argument's author uh, usually makes is that uh, X is a representative sample of Y because without this, he couldn't reach the conclusion that uh, what is true for X is true for Y. A simple example for this kind of arguments is when we want to answer a, a question, a simple question, which is what is the percentage of families in Alexandria who have a PlayStation device in their homes? So in order to reach this conclusion about the population 
of Alexandria, we can have someone can have a sample uh, from uh, the families in Alexandria, and uh, by reaching the by reaching the certain percentage of families. Uh, who have a PlayStation device in their homes in this sample, he can reach a conclusion about the population in Alexandria. In Alexandria. For example, if he if found that the percentage of families in that sample was uh, 30%, so he can reach a conclusion that 30% of the families in Alexandria have uh, PlayStation device in their homes okay uh, actually he couldn't reach this conclusion without assuming that the sample is representative the sample that he worked on was representative enough to reach this conclusion that was his assumption you may agree or disagree we do not discuss this now Okay, but so we discuss or we analyze the way he reached the conclusion out of the premises. The third type of argumentation or the third type of arguments uh, created by the inductive way is uh, the analogical arguments or the analogical argumentation in which in which we have x and y uh, are not cause and effect like we do with uh, the cause and effect argument uh, or we don't have x and y here as x as a sample and y as a population as we do with the statistical argumentation here x and y are parallel entities uh, between which we have a lot of similarities for example, S1, S2, similarity 1, similarity 2, similarity 3, S1, S2, S3. We consider these similarities uh, as facts. And we can reach the conclusion that uh, what is true for X is true for Y. What is true for X is true for Y. Because here, the author assumes that... Uh, uh, based on the similarities between X and Y and uh, uh, knowing a piece of, uh, of, uh, of information or a fact about X we can conclude that uh, what happens to X will happen to Y at this moment the assumption of this argumentation is based on the idea that uh, when x and y or x y and z or two or more uh, entities when they share some similarities they will share everything so if uh, one piece of information or one fact appears on one side he uh, the author of the argument will conclude that this will be true on the other side so the assumption of this argument is sharing some similarities will share all qualities. Without this assumption, the author of the argument wouldn't be able to reach the conclusion that what is true for X is true for Y. A simple uh, example for this kind of argumentation, if we have X and Y as two girls, for example, Nisreen and Nirmeen, and we have a lot of similarities between Nisreen and Nermeen. For example, they live in the same building. Uh, this is one similarity. Another similarity, they uh, go to the same school. This is another similarity. And uh, they uh, go to the same club. This is a third similarity. Okay. And uh, by knowing that uh, Nisreen uh, plays basketball, so the author of the arg of this argument uh, will conclude that uh, also Nermeen will be uh, playing basketball so the assumption here on which the uh, the author uh, based his or her uh, conclusion is that 
based on the similarities between the two entities X and Y, Nisreen and Nermeen, and because they share some similarities, they will share everything. We can say that each argument made or created uh, by this inductive way, uh, we are able to strengthen or weaken the logic or the line of reasoning in each kind of, argu of argument. Uh, and this is simple. This is simple. If we supported the assumptions in each argument, we will strengthen the argument. So we will strengthen the line of reasoning uh, connecting the premises uh, with the conclusion. And if we doubt, if we cast some doubt uh, in the assumptions of the argument, so we are weakening, we are weakening the way the conclusion is drawn from premises so it is simple if we want to strengthen the argument it means if we want to increase how much the argument is convincing or how convincing the argument is we simply support the assumptions and if we want to do the opposite and weaken the argument we simply cast doubt cast doubt in or on the assumptions. So in that way, we weaken the line of reasoning that connects the conclusion with the premises.